One of the things about little Freddie King is he's about one of the nicest, humblest, coolest cats you'll ever want to meet. In the dictionary under cool should be a picture of Freddie, you know? Little Freddie Kane, the old blues player. I am Dr. Bone because I have my medicine bag and uh, I have it full of medicine and I take that and that's what they call blues medicine. They call me Cheyenne Bodie because I used to wear cowboy boots and blue jeans and cowboy hat. So they gave me that nickname, Cheyenne. He's a generational artist. He's from a time frame in the 50s of the black music from Mississippi coming down to New Orleans. It's like meeting like a bard or a griot or somebody that's there to tell history. Freddie grew up the son of a sharecropper and, and literally plowing behind a mule when he was a, a, a kid. Worked it hard in the cotton field on the plantation. Worked it hard and what my main, main part of it is playing the blues, that was my heart. Uh, he came as a young man at 14. Some other guys came down at young ages too looking for jobs. Work was the primary thing they were looking for. I mean, it, it really blows my mind. You know, got down here in this big city here, it looked like Las Vegas to me because I never had been to a place like that. And uh, it, everything was convenient and everything. More people in a place where I could get connection and get a good, good job. Over the years, as they get in their 20s and all, they started meeting each other in the community, at the workplace, on the riverfront where Freddie used to work. He met Slim Harpo, he met Boogie Bill Webb at a ballroom. He would meet these Mississippi-style players, and they formed a bond. They had this generational bond of blues guys, and they hung around in each other's house. They sat on a porch, they played instruments, drank till they couldn't see anymore and they just played all night, you know. Apparently, Freddie was pretty wild when he was a young cat. He's lived in the shadows, and the blues always lives in the shadows, because it's not commercial music. It's music for the people, made for the community. If he laid out of music for a long time just to heal up and get away from alcohol. He only played once a year when Quinn Davis would call him up to come to the Jazz Fest. They had three stages there, and I will play on each one of them. And then after they left from here, went to the fairground, and I used to play six times in six days. Out of six days, I made 300 bucks. So during that time, they was paying me $50 a day. Mm -hmm. And it's just a short stroll from here across the field to stage two, where little Freddie King is playing blues guitar in a style influenced strongly by Lightning Hopkins. <laughs> been walking, trying to find my baby dog. Yeah, you know I've been walking, trying to find my baby dog. Well, if I don't find my little woman, look like I'm going to have a better nose another time. Still at it. So that made my 51 birthday. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say, excuse me. I made it my 51 year playing for Jazz Fest. Freddie was working, rebuilding alternators up by the Superdome, and he asked me to come up to the shop where he worked at to practice. And uh, so I did that. But at that time, I was working at BJ's Bar, Tendon Bar, and I said, Freddie, I said, I work in a little neighborhood joint in the Ninth Ward. I said, we could practice at the bar room and put a tip jar out. Maybe the boss will throw us a couple of dollars and, and there'll be some folks dancing we can look at, you know? And, 
And so uh, Freddie was only doing one gig a year at the time. He was just playing the jazz festival. And uh, so we started practice. We started practicing at PJs, and that's how we started playing here on a regular basis. At that time, he was very under-recognized. He was what you would call an underground player. He, they might have heard of him, but nobody went to see him. And Freddie never had many club dates and all. But once they heard Freddie play, it was all over. But to get the blue, to receive the blue, you got to got to pay got to pay your, your your dues. You have to go through a whole lot of hard work and hard trying and tribulation. You get out there, you got shoes and you don't want to hold them. They don't got thin as a dime. Then you got to patch them with a piece of cardboard to try to get through to make your day to keep them tan your feet up. People like Freddie are very important. You know, Freddie's Freddie's 82 years old now. And there's not many folks from his generation left doing it. And, and it's really important music because blues music really is the wellspring of all American music. And there's a direct link between the blues and the rock and roll and the rock music and, and, and the hip hop music. And there's a direct line through all of that. A lot of white rockers and people um, extricated from this music and, and used it for their careers. and been very famous, but Blues at the Roots is a community music for the community, and that's what Freddie has dedicated his life to. But he's a generational player. He's the last of it. That's the key. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're never going to stop, are you? No, no. As long as the good Lord let me be able to move my fingers and move around, or put one foot in front of the other, yeah. I'm going to hang in there and play that music. Yeah. Because it really keeps me going. And I can be half dead, feeling real bad, pains everywhere. I get on the stage and start playing, yeah. it's gone. I feel like I'm 16 years old. 